Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Squadrons video. Now, before we begin, I am very, very excited to announce a new Patreon launching for X2. The Patreon will be managed by Charlie, who will be hooking you future patrons up with a lot of cool rewards. Everything from game nights with us to an X2 newsletter. God, I'm interested to see what gets in there. Exclusive merchandise and more. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, which of course is never required, but always appreciated. Check the link down in the description. So today, big surprise, we're talking about Star Wars Squadrons, and I actually did a video before I got to try the game about some of the techniques from Star Wars Legends that might work in Squadron, that might be effective in various battles, but today we're sort of taking things from a different angle. So after having played Squadrons early, thanks to EA, and, and having talked to other content creators within the community who also got to try the game, I've put together a list of what I'm calling advanced advanced techniques for fleet battles and dogfight mode. Now, not all of these tips will apply to both game types. Some may be fleet battles exclusive, but I think you'll find them all very interesting. As a note, when I say advanced tactics, keep in mind that I'm coming from the perspective of a group which only got to play the game for a little while. So in just a few months when we're all in this game and when Charlie and Corey and I have made an elite starfighter squadron, these may feel pretty basic. But for now, I think not only are they interesting, but they show the depth of the combat experience. The first two advanced tactics relate to some of the most important systems within the game. Let's start first with power management. So when you build up one of your component powers, which you have three of if you're the New Republic or the TIE Reaper, and two of if you're the Empire, if you've got full power to engines, for example, regardless of how fast you're moving, you'll begin to build up a boost, which can be activated and which makes your ship go really, really fast, even slower vessels like support ships or bombers. Power to shields actually gives you an overshield, and if you wait long enough, the shield will actually double your original shield output. Power to laser increases their speed and allows you to fire more without the weapon overheating. The interesting thing is that these bonuses remain, although they do slowly decrease, even after you've normalized power or shunted it to a different system. So just because you've moved your power back equally distributed among all of your components, your ship still has its active overshield. So the tactic here is, before engaging an enemy, get a bonus ready. What I like to do before jumping straight into battle is to chill out for a minute and let my ship get a full overshield. It only takes a few extra seconds, but you just have to be conscious of what you're doing and not just rush into battle. And of course, it also requires a little bit of patience. And if you pull this off well, that means you can also have several components with that extra charge. The boost builds up really quickly, so you can attack an enemy capital ship with a fully charged front facing overshield while boosting into battle. Then when you're at the sweet spot, you can shunt power over to your lasers or equally distribute it or do whatever you want. As I mentioned, my second pro tip also relates to a system within the ship and that is target switching. So your ship scanner is incredibly useful. Even the most basic and new players will use it to track enemy fighters, to check an enemy's health and find their direction and position. But there's so much more you can do. If you hold the the target select button, which on Xbox controller is L, you can actually choose which targets you'll select. So if you hold it, for example, you can choose to target only enemy starfighters, or only enemy AI starfighters, or human starfighters, or human starfighters on your team, or capital ship objectives, or whatever else. This is really a fundamental aspect of the game, and when I spoke to people who figured this out, I personally only got the basic hang of it during my play sessions, it completely changes how you play certain ships. For example, if you're playing a support focused TIE Reaper with a healing ability, you probably want to set it so your targeting systems focus on human allies. Now that doesn't mean you won't see enemy starfighters on your map or anything like that. What it means is if there's a friendly ship nearby and you click the target button, you can select them and it'll be really easy for you to find them. As the Reaper, you can also check exactly the health of your allies so you can tell if they need a resupply. Targeting your allies I find also works very very, very well for coordinating team play. For example, if I was flying as a wingman to one of my teammates, rather than manually changing my target selector, I would just keep it on all, but I would select them so I could follow them around the battle, because sometimes when you're pulling insane maneuvers, you might lose visual sight of your allies.
ally, but if you have them selected, it will say your ally is right behind you or that your ally is over off to the right. Another really important use of this feature is when attacking enemy capital ships, especially as bombers looking to inflict massive damage. You can have it so you only target enemy subsystems and it makes it much easier to sort of flick around targets on the battlefield without picking up stray fighters or whatever else. You can basically check which subsystems are most damaged and decide to go for them or go for the one that's strongest. A tougher but arguably even cooler way that you can use this system is if you target missiles. One thing that I did, although without the target system, was in a tide use a boost to gain some distance between a missile which was trailing me then i turned around and shot it out of the air because i was out of countermeasures and i really had no other option i was in pretty open space missiles move very quickly so the targeting wheel will definitely help you in this case and it's a pretty simple selection as well you just hold l and then choose whichever target you want to focus on or whichever type of target my next tip is one that i think will be a little bit controversial and is definitely less objectively helpful than the other two that is, if you're a shielded ship, put full shields to back. I've got a couple of reasons for this. First of all, on any ship, the weakest part and the most vulnerable part is the very back. There's no way to fire back at an enemy. Second of all, I played a lot of Interceptor, and I noticed a lot of my deaths were coming from ships shooting me from behind rather than head on. Thirdly, and this is just me, there's a lot of controls on the controller, and I just found it easier to not always have to shift power, because you can keep it equalized, but I just think most of the time you're dying, it's to one enemy, either in front of you or behind you, so it's sort of a waste. For me personally, just how my brain works, I find it a little more easy to hold the shield button and switch my shields to front than just keeping them defaulted to back. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this. If you're flying into a battle and most of your enemies are in front of you, of course, you want to normalize your shields or put them forward. If you're attacking a capital ship, you definitely want to put them to double front until you pass over them. And I will say you cannot underestimate the importance of power distribution and of shield switching. For power distribution, distribution especially, there's no reason to have your ship equalized when you're just flying somewhere unless you anticipate being attacked. You might as well put your power into your engines so you can get there quicker or one of your other components to build up one of the benefits that we talked about earlier. Just generally on this point before I move on, I think the game rewards people who play on the edge. Rather than just flying the ship without, you know, managing your power or your shields or your targeting or whatever else, all of these things are some of the ways the skill gap will manifest and you are definitely rewarded for playing smart. My next tip is don't die. That's very advanced. You guys probably didn't know that before you watched this video. But seriously, in capital ship battles especially, dying is a very, very, very bad. And I think this is a good opportunity to talk generally about how fleet battles work. And I can do a whole video on this if you're interested, because I think it's really interesting. So one of the most important aspects of fleet battle, really the most important besides your capital ship health, is the morale system. System. As you kill starfighters or corvettes, you gain more morale, and it's morale which allows you to eventually attack the enemy's frigates and their capital ships. Dying comes, however, not with only a serious, serious morale loss, but the opportunity to get enemy morale and an entire 15 seconds, if I'm remembering correctly, respawn window. I think at high competitive levels, when people are communicating and coordinating among all five players within their squadron, having even a one person advantage will be absolutely critical. And it's a snowballing at that point, because if you notice the enemy is scattered and you can get a couple of ships on one enemy and just get that little starfight advantage then suddenly a lot of people are dying and you're having a much easier time moving morale and attacking their more difficult targets like their frigates and their capital ship just generally you want to think about the game somewhat like a MOBA and then Adiri Shipyards is very MOBA like because of the three lanes and as I mentioned I can talk about that later but you do not want to feed the enemy and there are also ways you can build up morale without having to fight enemy starfighters. When I played as the TIE Reaper, for example, I wasn't really going into battle. I was sitting back and healing my allies. However, because I was sort of in the middle of the map, staying away from the enemy, I was able to farm some AI starfighters. And if you kill a few of those, the morale really starts to add up. A connected tip, tip number 3B or 4B, whatever we're on, is to coordinate sieges on capital 
shuttle ship, so then coordinate it not only with enemy starfighters, but if your corvette is taking a run at one of the enemy frigates, it will be taking away some of their firepower, because they'll be shooting at the corvette, and it will be inflicting damage as well. But when we're talking about player coordination, the ping system is great for this. You can ping an enemy target just with a simple Y press on the Xbox controller, then friendly starfighters can acknowledge it, and you can attack together. Just imagine this, you've got three or four starfighters together on a same target. Maybe two Y wings are going in to actually attack the frigate, while an A wing and an X wing are responsible for keeping fighters off their back. That's not an imaginary situation, that's one that will actually happen if you properly use the systems, and it is very, very cool. The pings will also be really, really useful if you're being attacked or if you need a heal, because like with the targeting wheel, there's just a basic ping, which will just target an enemy, and you can actually hold it to open up a context wheel. Y up Y is used to mark your own starfighter, and then especially if you're on voice chat, you can coordinate with your team to help get that fighter off you, get that heal, or to have them form up whatever you need. My final tip for today is to be smart with how you use capital ships. Now, I covered this a lot in yesterday's video, so just a brief discussion right now, but capital ships will absolutely annihilate starfighters, especially if you're not moving or even moving slowly or parallel with the ship. You need to attack hard, full speed, doing maneuvers, you get in there, cause some damage, and you leave. If you're really gonna go for a sustained bombing run, you need to make sure that you've got all power to shields, and even then, it will really only work if the capital ship is focused on something else, or you get very lucky. That's why coordinating with multiple people works really well. However, it's more than just that. Especially when you're on attack, when, when the morale meter is favoring you, your friendly capital ships, your two frigates and your Star Destroyer or your MC-75, will be laying down almost like a flak screen. The enemy's not going to get very far over to your side when the morale is high, especially if the frigates are alive. So if you're almost dead, head back towards your fleet, try to survive, and your frigates will really do the rest of the work. They will easily kill an enemy trying to attack you, and most times they'll just give up. You can also resupply at your Star Destroyers or your two frigates if they're still alive. Your Star Destroyer gives you full health, it repairs any cracks in your screen or whatever else, and it allows you to change ships or loadouts if you want to. The two frigates don't do quite that much, but if you're attacking and you stop under a friendly frigate, well, there's a very clear area so you won't miss it, you'll have your ship resupplied and repaired. It is very, very useful, especially considering how important staying alive will be in fleet battles. Other than that, I think there will be some emerging meta about how to attack the final enemy capital ship, which components you want to take down in which order, so pay attention to what your teammates think you should do. I really don't know the best way to take out an enemy capital ship, but I think there will be some very interesting information that you can learn to at least make an informed decision about the sort of end game of the fleet battles match. But that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this Star Wars Squadrons video. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. Until next time, be safe, and may the Force be with you.